Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Islamic Ethics. We are today talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness can have many meanings, one from God, one from another person to to us, and sometimes forgiveness from parents, from our sins. We will talk about forgiveness for each other. Today we will discuss uh, many times we find it difficult in, uh, in us to forgive others. Uh, I find it sometimes difficult to say I forgive another person because they have wronged me or they have done something against me, they have said something against me. So it can become very difficult to say I forgive. One of the best qualities of a believing person is to forgive. Imam Ali Islam says, um, the best action is when in power you forgive. When you have the control, the other person did not forgive you, but you forgive. We feel forgiveness can be difficult uh, only and only because we have been through something that was very hurtful. The other person said or did something against us that uh, gave us a bad name or uh, caused us loss or hurt us uh, uh, not physically but sometimes spiritually so badly that we find it difficult in us to, to forgive. So how do we forgive a person? And uh, forgiveness is a quality uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ghafoor, he is rahim, he is afuun. You know, af, we, you know, we have to try and forgive. So af is a quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afuun ghafoor. He is forgiving, accepting uh, someone's pardon or uh, accepting someone's uh, repentance. So how do we drive ourselves to forgive another person? Let's look forward to uh, forgiveness in a positive way. Imam uh, Sajjad salam always said to his uh, servants, he said, uh, you say to me that, O Sayyid Sajjad, O Sajjad, you forgive us and Allah will forgive you. Even though he's infallible, he has no sins, he has no shortcomings, he has no faults. And he says, he's teaching them to say that you should always forgive others and expect Allah to forgive you. When you say, oh Allah, I forgive this person purely for your sake. Purely because I want you to forgive me. I have greater sins than this person. He has wronged me, but I forgive him for your sake. Many times that person doesn't even need to know. Many times people don't even realize that they have wronged you. And sometimes they do realize and they ask for forgiveness. And when they ask for forgiveness, we find it very difficult to say, I forgive. So forgiveness can be difficult, but uh, in certain relations it is expected. Like children always expect parents to forgive. And sometimes parents find it very difficult to say, I forgive. So what do we do with our parents, with our brothers and sisters, spouses, children, cousins, brothers and sisters, other family members, elders of the community, younger people, students? There's a whole different category and everyone has some faults and no one is perfect. We are not infallible and therefore we all have shortcomings and we have to try and learn to, to forgive others. Let's learn a few lessons. Number one, treat others the way you want to be treated. And that will help you uh, uh, to live up to expectations or live up to um, and normal standards rather than expecting others to be perfect in, in your relationship but you are not perfect when you are in relation with others. So first of all and first and foremost I should say uh, it is uh, the expectations you have of others you should give them back the same. Uh, there's a tradition that says um, you should like something for your brother what you like for yourself. So you like for yourself that others forgive you if you ever do wrong to them. You say something about them and they find out and you say, okay, I'm sorry. And you expect them to say, okay, I forgive. Okay, it's okay. There's no problem. But when it comes to you, you expect that, no, I can't do it. I can't forgive. I cannot just say it's okay. So we have to try and learn that uh, how do you want others to treat you? You treat them the same way. 
That's number one. Number two, we always want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook all of our sins and, and forgive. Imam al-Islam says, Al-Hadar, Al-Hadar. Uh, indeed, he says, be warned, be warned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers your sins so much so as if he has forgiven you. That's is beautiful. It says that you sin so much and he covers your sins so much so that you start feeling that he is forgiven. So he may not have forgiven because you haven't ever been sorry inside your heart. You haven't ever, ever asked for forgiveness. So just as you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive, you should expect uh, yourself to also forgive others. But if you do wrong to others, you should ask for their forgiveness as well. If I backbite someone, then I should ask them to forgive. But one of the most important things to remember is that one must not always expect to do wrong to others with the intention that I'll be forgiven anyway and I will forgive others. Because then you make a habit of a consistency in evil deeds. One has to make sure that forgiveness only comes with the condition that one must not repeat the same sin over and over again. You cannot backbite a person and go back and say, please forgive. You cannot hurt a person's feelings and say, please forgive. You cannot uh, destroy someone's reputation and say, please forgive. No, you have to rectify your mistake. You have to improve your personality and then expect the forgiveness. So it is important that you likewise, um, uh, uh, in your life, uh, ask for forgiveness from others, but also forgive others. If you do not forgive others, then you should not expect forgiveness from them. Another dimension I would like to mention in forgiveness is that the Holy Quran says, Fa'fu uh, Forgive each other and forget, forgive and forget. So don't hold grudges for, uh, for years and decades. In olden days, the, the bad qualities of the Jahiliya, uh, pre-Islamic time, the people used to fight and go to battles against each other for, for years, for, cent you know, for, for decades. They would remember, they said, oh, your grandfather swore at my grandfather and I'm going to take revenge. Well, hang on. It was their grandfather who committed the sin and not the grandchildren. Why are you taking revenge from the grandchildren? That should not happen. So we sometimes find it difficult in ourselves uh, to forgive and take revenge from the generations to come. That should never happen. And uh, the evil deeds of many of the olders are not punishable with the children. Likewise, uh, a person should, um, should move on in life. And one of the things that I like in some of the nations is that they they quickly move on. When they realize that there has been a mistake, there has been something wrong, they accept that yes, there was a mistake made and they move on in life. Many nations find it difficult, many groups, many um, uh, communities find it very difficult in themselves to forget and move on. It is extremely important that once something has been rectified or something that has, in other words, there is no uh, point crying over spilled milk. Once the damage is done, we have to try and move on. If you cannot forgive, then at least try and forget it. If you cannot forgive a person, try and forget it so it does not bother you all of your life. But in Islam, forgiveness is a great quality. From a very young age, children have to be taught to be close to each other, especially siblings. When children sometimes from their parents do not learn, you know, when father and mother say that I'll not forgive you all the time when they hear this um, to either to each other, husband and wife say to each other in front of children, or they say to their brothers and sisters or other community members, when the children hear that, they learn to not forgive. So we should be sahlul mu'amala, you know, al mu'minu sah. The hadith says or the infallibles have described that a believing person is easy to deal with. 
and people who do not believe are very difficult sometimes to deal with because dealing is something that teaches you uh, a lot about a person's personality. Uh, three things teach you about a person. Uh, one, uh, traveling with them. Secondly, eating with them on a dinner table. And thirdly, dealing with them in, a, in a either a business deal or whatever. When you deal with a person, that's when you learn about them. Also traveling, because in traveling people can become tired and people can have all sorts of problems and then you see how they are. And on dinner table, are they really sacrificing or are they very selfish? So dealing. Dealing is something that teaches you a great deal about each other. So one should be easy to deal with. We should not be extremely difficult to deal with. Uh, but there should be places we know very clearly where we can compromise and where we cannot compromise. We cannot compromise on our faith, on many things, but we have to make compromises in our life in many places. One of the places we have to compromise on is our ego. We have to make sure that we compromise on our ego. Oh, it is I, it was mine, it was my position to hold, it was my... And that we have to, you know, the ego that we have, sometimes our, you know, it is not an ego, but it is uh, self-respect. But many times in the name of self-respect, we all have egos and we all have that... Um, uh, arrogance in us where we find it difficult to, to compromise and to deal with people and to forgive them. Now finally in this uh, session I would like to say that uh, forgiveness is a good quality but we should do it uh, for the sake of God, we should do it with our believing brothers and sisters and especially with our family members. Parents do forgive, but the children should never take advantage of parents and expect, oh, they are parents, they will come around anyway. Uh, children do forgive, but the parents should never take advantage, okay, I will now give the share of this son or this daughter to that son and that daughter, and they will later on compromise. We should never ever uh, uh, compromise on the rights of individuals uh, and later on expect them to, to come around because we don't expect that sort of treatment for ourselves, we should not give that sort of treatment to others. So I uh, urge all of my brothers and sisters and my children to practice forgiveness for the sake of God. Thank you very much for listening. Fiyamanillah.